Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this video today. This is going to be a one month update on the EG4 solar heat pump. Uh, today I'm going to kind of show you a breakdown of the day to day electrical consumption as well as my natural gas bill as a result of this thing kind of taking some of the load off my gas furnace. Uh, if you haven't seen the other videos, this is a solar heat pump. It runs directly on solar panels. I have 1400 watts of panels mounted up on my pergola. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Dai Manufacturing. They actually produce this air conditioner in China. EG4 is kind of the North American uh, retailer for it, but it is produced by Dai. They checked out my last video, left some comments on there, so that was pretty cool to see. Uh, they make a lot of other solar products. They also have a heat pump water heater that looks pretty interesting, so check out their website. They have some cool stuff, but uh, anyway, this is going to be a breakdown of the usage. Okay, so I'm going to show you the overview of my gas usage for the month. Uh, this is for the month of February. It's billed in March, but this is February. So this is a day I ran the heat pump most of the day. Uh, as you can see, I do run the furnace overnight when the sun's down, but if the sun is out, I'm trying to run the heat pump as much as possible. Um, you can see the temps for the day, high of 41, low of 24. This day I ran the furnace most of the day. We had a lot of snow on the panels, but the temperatures were around the same. Um, so a furnace ran most of the day that day compared to the day before. You can see uh, about a three hour difference in overall usage between the two days. This is another day I ran the heat pump all day while the sun was out uh, just to get as much free energy as possible. Sometimes I will run the furnace between 5 and 7 p.m. Those are kind of peak hours. So you'll see a couple of days where I ran it during those times. Uh, that is where I ran the air conditioner for about an hour. I kicked the furnace into AC mode with the outdoor unit turned off at the disconnect just so... I could get a little more circulation throughout all the rooms um, because the heat pump does just kind of pump into the main area. So running that fan kind of um, evens out the temperature in the bedrooms, gets everything up to the same temperature. So here you can see I ran the furnace for peak hours that day um, just to save a little on hydro. It's not been overly sunny. Majority of the uh, majority of the time the heat pumps on, uh, I'm getting about 50% from solar. So I'll show you the gas bill next and then I'll show you the overall uh, hydro consumption on the heat pump and how much has actually come from solar. So here's my gas bill for the month. I'm in Ontario, so this is uh, an Enbridge bill. So you can see the total cost for the month was $120, uh, 167 cubic meters of consumption this year. And you can see here last year, I used a total of 313 cubic meters for this same billing period. So significantly less gas. Um, here's a little chart with the March billing period this year versus last year. Um, Pretty significant difference. Again, there's other variables, the temperature and things have been a little more mild, but uh, I have been using this heat pump almost every day. So as you can see here, the majority of the bill is fees. There's a customer charge, delivery, uh, federal carbon tax, and then I finally get to actual consumption. So if we punch in the, um, the rate, 32 cents per cubic meter times our 167 uh, cubic meters you can see we actually paid $53 for consumption uh, which adds up here we have that 43 plus the cost adjustment which totals about 53 I didn't go to the decimal place but that is accurate so um, if this had have been last year um, we will punch those numbers in 313 cubic meters at 32 cents um, per cubic meter puts us right around $100 so Saved about $50, just short of $50 uh, on the gas bill this year. You can see that total usage would have been about $100. So uh, definitely saving us some money. Again, there's other variables, the temperature. I didn't I didn't look into the temperature every single day of last year. Um, I'm not going to get into that. But yeah, uh, the whole purpose of this unit was to try to save a little money on the gas bill. And as you can see, majority of it is actually fees. So thanks for that, Enbridge. But uh, we did save about $50 in the first month of use. So I will show you the uh, consumption for electricity on the heat pump side of things next. And about 50% of what we've actually consumed for hydro has come from solar. So that's free. Uh, I did just get my electricity bill for the month as of yesterday, I believe. Um, really no change to the electricity bill, maybe $5 higher than normal. So pretty good. Okay, here we have the electrical consumption from the heat pump. As you can see in the top left corner, we have a total consumption of 132,000 watt hours or 132 kilowatt hours. Uh, that's over the life of the unit. 
for March, we have just short of 80 kilowatt hours. Um, and you can see we have 40 from grid and 38 from solar. So a little bit less than half of the power used this month has come from solar, which is pretty good for uh, March in Canada. We don't really get a lot of good sun until kind of later in the spring. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Here's a breakdown of March uh, daily usage. You can see uh, my highest usage was um, about five and a half kilowatt hours. Um, some days down here where obviously I didn't run it too much. We either had snow on the panels or it was just really cloudy. And then a couple days like this where we got a good amount from solar. So again, really happy with it so far. I, uh, I think that's pretty good for March and no complaints. Well, I hope that breakdown made sense. I'm sure this video was not as exciting as some videos, but uh, if you are considering this unit or a similar unit, uh, it's kind of nice to know the usage and what you can potentially save depending on your utility and stuff like that. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.